First of all, I would like to thank Vince Kokic for giving us the opportunity to prepare this little video as an introduction to our paper, Three-Dimensional Assessment of Mandibular and Glenoid Fossa Changes After Bone Anchored Class 3 Intermaxillary Traction. This paper is the result of a very nice collaboration between Brussels, North Carolina University and Michigan University. Last year, we published a number of papers on a new treatment protocol for growing class 3 patients. We insert a mini plate at the level of the infrazygomatic crest and a second one in the canine region of the mandible. Intermaxillary elastics are worn 24 hours a day. We look to the results of 25 consecutive cases treated with this new approach and focused specially on the changes in the mandible. We observed in most of the cases that the bony chin didn't move forward in most of the patients and in some even moved backwards. How can we explain that during one year of active treatment the chin doesn't move forward? Initially, we thought about maybe restriction of the condylar growth or an open rotation of the mandible. However, when we compared our data to the 2D data, 2D data of an untreated control group, we couldn't confirm this hypothesis. So there had to be another explanation. In most of the patients, we observed a posterior displacement of the cone lines. And when we looked to the opposing articular fossa, we found a very nice correlation between bone apposition at the anterior eminence and posterior displacement of the anterior surface of the, of the condyle. And on the second hand, we found resorption at the posterior wall of the glenoid fossa, which was nicely correlated to posterior displacement of the posterior surface of the condyles. These remodeling processes in the articular fossa resulted in a kind of relocation of the entire articulation. However, in the mean for the whole sample, the mean displacement was about 1.4 mm and was not sufficient to completely explain the restriction of forward displacement of the chin. So we found another explanation, which is a posterior displacement, the displacement of the ramus of the mandible, with a slight closure of the gonial angle, resulting in a restriction of the forward displacement of the chin without posterior rotation of the mandible and increase of the mandibular plane angle. We see this nicely on this little video where we see on both sides a reduction of the gonial angle. So we see the ramus moving backwards, the swing back of the ramus, closure of the gonial angle resulting in a restriction of the forward displacement of the bony chin. So as a conclusion, we can say that most probably by our approach, size of the mandible is not affected. A closure of the gonial angle, swing back of the ramus, and some remodeling processes in the articular fossa result rather in a change in the shape of the mandible. I would like to thank my collaborators and friends, Lucia Sevillanes, Tung Wen, and Leonardo De Paul for their nice collaboration all over the years. And I would like to thank you for looking to the video. We hope you will enjoy reading the paper. Thank you very much.